Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, we're up to Justice for All, uh, Reunion and Turnabout Part 2-1, the first trial segment in that trial. Uh, so, look forward to Reunion and Turnabout, start of the trial, because that's what we're doing now. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Yes please. June 21st, 9.48am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. What? Prosecutor Von Karma? You mean... No, I heard it's his successor this time. Successor? Manfred Von Karma was a really sinister man. He pulled all sorts of nasty tricks, also he could win. He was a man obsessed with the word perfection. He had a perfect record for 40 long years. Who knows what sorts of dirty tricks he used to get each of those guilty verdicts. And now, his successor. I wonder what kind of person they'll turn out to be. Notice that they're not used- they're like very conspicuously avoiding pronouns and gendering of this person. Um, I imagine this sounds a little less stilted than the original Japanese. Um... This game has a bit of a problem with that. There's a couple of places where they refer to characters gender neutrally when it doesn't really make sense to. Here it's okay. Um, later on you'll see a bit that doesn't really make any sense at all. It's no good. Mystic Maya! Polly! You showed up! Thanks for coming all this way! I was really worried about you. Hey, where's your mother? Didn't the two of you come together? Mother is watching over the trainees. She said they have training for two days straight with no breaks. Huh? Then, then, you came all by yourself? Yup. I snuck out of the matter and followed a map. Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Of course not. I ran. That's, I can't, oh my. If it takes two hours by train. Oh man. Holy. What about the train? Huh? What's a train? I give up. It's time, isn't it? Um, I'm really scared. What if Von Karma tries to do something to me? At least I know Mr. Edgeworth would be nicer to me than Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth? Who is that? Um, he's Nick's rival. Well, he's also a friend. I still remember him as though I'd seen him only yesterday. Objection! Every trial was a scorchingly fierce battle until the very end. Objection! Objection! It was always back and forth with them. But when you're rivals for life... Maya, please don't mention that name ever again. Huh? But why, Nick? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya. I forgot you don't know. He... he's... he's gone. And he's not coming back. What? Wait, wait a second. What's that supposed to mean? Court will commence shortly. Please proceed into the courtroom. Let's go. Now's not the time to talk about that anyway. N Nick? June 21st, 10am. District Court. Courtroom number 2. Court is now in session for the trial of Maya Faye. Are the prosecution and the defense prepared? What is with this kid? Okay, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of an appropriate accent for Franzi. I'm not expecting to be any good at it. We'll see how we go. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, are you prepared? Huh? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Why does he always seem mad at me? Mr. Phoenix Wright. You must be a little shocked because I am a woman, correct? Hold on. So she's the famed successor to Prosecutor Von Karma? I am Franziska Von Karma. I don't know what I'm doing with this voice. The prodigy. I see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. 
Revenge. Revenge? Okay, this is not this is not a German accent in the slightest. I can't do this. Is this about her father, Manfred von Karma? Um, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can. I'm talking. If you interrupt again, my whip will do the speaking for me. Please speak with your mouth like a normal person. I beg of you. Yow! Make no mistake, I will defeat you. Prepare to go down, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Prosecutor, Prosecutor Von Karma, your opening statement, please. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing with her voice. I'm trying. I'm really trying. It just doesn't sound right. I, m I might just, just try to use a normal voice. I'm sorry. Those of Von Karma blood have only one fate. And that is perfection. The defendant, Maya Fey, will find no escape from her guilt on my watch. On my watch. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm trying. I'm trying. <sighs> Very well. What is the defense's position? Your Honor. Does the defense wish to enter a plea of not guilty? Yes. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. Ten minutes. I give the defense ten minutes before it changes its plea. That's right. I'll have you running for the justified self-defense plea in no time. Justified self-defense? A plea usually reserved for when a person unintentionally kills in defense of themselves. What do you mean usually reserved? That's what it is for. That's what it means. We could very easily make a solid case that it was self-defense, but... The defense stands by the plea of not guilty, Your Honor. Because to plead justified self-defense is to say you did kill someone. I yes it is, but it, it, it's saying you killed someone out of self-defense because they were trying to murder you. <sighs> this game is weird. How foolish. If that's how you want to play it, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And I shall now call the first witness. She's just as scary as her father. Like father, like daughter, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing with her voice. I, I, I can't do the right accent. Witness, your name and occupation? Yes, sir. My name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective at the local precinct. Yeah! Get to the point already. Zzz. Explain to the court the details of this murder. Y yes, sir. Um, if everyone would please look at this map. Why are you saying sir? Franziska is not a sir. <sighs> the channeling chamber has no windows and the door was locked shut. At the time of the murder, only the victim and the defendant were in the room. What were they doing in there? Um, they, well, they were channeling a spirit, sir. Ch channeling a spirit? That's quite the look of disbelief there, Your Honor. Ahem. <clears throat> Anyway, a few minutes after the channeling started, gunshots were heard coming from inside the room, sir. A few of the witnesses broke the door down and rushed into the room. Ah, and that's when they found that the victim was already dead, correct? Hmm, I believe this is one of the most open and shut cases I have ever presided over. Floor plans added to the court record. So, how was the victim killed? I was about to get to that. Stop wasting my time, Zen. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> cause of death. The direct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead, sir. The shot was fired from point-blank range. But before the victim was shot, sir, he was stabbed in the chest. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause instantaneous death. The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Hmm. So the victim was stabbed before being shot. This is the victim's autopsy report, sir. Autopsy report added to the court record. The court accepts into evidence. Mr. Wright, you may question the witness. Okay, I think we just want to start by pressing here. Also, I'm sorry about my accent for Franzi. I'm, I'm really trying. I'm- I'm- I'm no, not good at this sort of thing. 
Hopefully it's cute and that's what really matters. <laughs> Press. The murder weapon, Detective Gumshoe. Whose pistol was it? It was the victim's. The victim? Now why would he have... Why would he have a pistol? Who cares? Is the point that you are missing is whose fingerprints are on that pistol. If you're not already paying attention to Zat, then I suggest you start. Fingerprints? There were fingerprints? Uh, along with the victims, the defendant, Maya Fays, were also on the grip, sir. Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were left in the murder weapon. You know, Francie's objection is just an American accent. Like, she doesn't actually have a German accent, according to the recorded voice. I'm gonna keep trying to do it, though. Ugh, walked right into her hands there. I'm gonna keep trying. Point blank, huh? So, about how far away is that? It's anywhere between 12 to 20 inches away. And how do you know he was shot at point blank? Tisk tisk tisk, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I grow tired of the foolish foolery of the foolish fools of this foolish country. Uh, excuse me? Gunpowder burn. Gunpowder burn? When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Gunpowder exploding is what makes a bullet fire, and that gets real hot, pal. And there were definitely some gunpowder burns left on the victim's forehead. Wow, never knew that. Live and learn, I guess. Hanging on the edge of tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> Before the victim was shot, so here is that in the chest. Yeah. Stabbed? And what was he stabbed with? A fruit knife. I see. And whose knife was it? Looks like it belongs to the face, sir. And of course, my face fingerprints are all over it. Hmm. All over it, huh? Ugh, this does not look good. <laughs> what will you do now, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Yeah, my my friend's Jessica voice doesn't sound right. I'm gonna keep working on it. Uh, hopefully it's okay. Hopefully people don't hate it too much. Let me know if you really hate it. <laughs> How severe was the wound? If it had been half an inch more to the right, it would have hit the victim's heart. After a stab like that, it's impossible to fight back, let alone stand. This testimony makes it sound like Myra had stabbed him with the intent to kill. Are you sure he was stabbed first, then shot? Yep, sure as sure can be. One look at the wounds and you come to the same conclusion too, pal. Fool is a fool who will only listen to the foolish opinions of other foolish fools. A pistol shot to the forehead at point blank is certainly enough to kill instantly. Does it matter, Zen, which was first? Think a little before you open that big mouth of yours, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Urgh. What a pain. You know, she's actually not that old. I probably should be using a higher voice. She's like, shit, she's 18. Maybe your voice is okay, as is. That's enough. We have clearly established how the victim was murdered. I brought the two murder weapons with me today. Very well. The court accepts them into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. Knife added to the court record. The date and time was June 19th at 3.15pm. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard two gunshots at this time and two murder weapons, both with the defendant's fingerprints on them, huh? Hmm. This does seem like an open and shut case. Naturally. This is going from bad to worse. As if the summary just now wasn't oversimplifying things to the extreme. Your Honor, feel free to slam that little gavel of yours. After all, there is no room left for doubt, is there? I think I'm doing some French things, like zzz. That's, that's more of a French thing, right? Ru French accent rather than German. I don't know. That is quite true, Mr. Wright. Y yes Even in the face of all this, do you still wish to plead not guilty? It's the opinion of this court that if you do not adjust your plea, you stand to lose. 
See? Just as I promised, Mr. Phoenix Fright. You would change your plea in less than 10 minutes. I know, I know in German you say a W but like a V, so hopefully that's right. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Will you change your justified self-defense? Because now would be the time to do so. This is your final chance. This is a huge decision, but I think this threw all away. Unfortunately, this is not a decision at all. Regardless of what you pick, you will still plead not guilty. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip the middleman. Plead not guilty. If we plead justified self-defense, we will be basically confessing to mur- No, we wouldn't. Justified self-defense isn't murder. You- God's sake, Phoenix. Confessing to murder. After the trial, Maya's life would be ruined, and she'd be labelled a murderer. No. If someone tries to kill you and you, you defend yourself, that's not murder. <sighs> I can't let that happen. Your Honor, have you reached a conclusion, Mr. Wright? The defense will not change its plea. We will accept nothing short of complete acquittal. You. You have sealed your fate, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Detective. Y yes sir. Presents the final portion of your testimony. The final strike. Um, yes sir. N now, see here. Proceedings are run by... Eek. Oh yes, of course. Go ahead, Detective, and give your testimony. I think the court would like to hear about the other piece of incriminating evidence. Incriminating evidence. I've got to work on my frenzy voice. Sorry, pal, but there's an even more incriminating piece of evidence. This is the costume the defendant was wearing at the time of the crime. As you can see, it's covered in blood. The defendant attacked and killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. So this is the costume. There certainly is evidence of a back spray of blood on this. This piece directly links my FA to the crime, so... I see. The court accepts this into evidence. Maya's costume added to the court record. Alright, Mr. Wright. Maya's fingerprints on both murder weapons and blood splatters on her clothes. Could this situation get any worse? Huh. What's wrong? You seem to be at a loss. I think this is the last piece of testimony the prosecution should have to offer. Feel free to sulk off with your tail between your legs, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Please stop calling me by my full name. It's disturbing. Alright, so there's an obvious contradiction with this costume we just got. Gumshoe says that the the uh, the victim was not fighting back, right? But if we look at this costume we have here, which the game won't let us do, <sighs> really? Oh, that's obnoxious. Maybe if I go to the court record, it'll let me look at it. No. Uh, I guess I'll just present it because I can't demonstrate it to you before doing so. Oh. I guess I have to press or something. Whatever. This evidence clearly reveals contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are the evidence in the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. That should have worked. Um, I guess I'll try pressing. He wasn't fighting back? How do you know if he was or wasn't? We could find no evidence the victim put up any sort of struggle, pal. Hmm. So did the murderer have a fight with the victim or not? Depending on this, the circumstances around this murder changed drastically. Ugh, we're in real trouble now. If only had something to prove that the victim did fight back. That Von Karma, she thinks she can decide the verdict with this testimony alone. Well, I'll find a critical contradiction somehow, and then I'll have her. Well, I just pointed out a contradiction. And didn't let me, so, um... This blood on the costume. Lab results showed that it is the victim's blood. Hmm, 
So there is blood from the victim on the defendant's clothes. Definitely not good. So were there any other clues you could glebe? Gleeb? I should say glean, not gleam, from this piece of evidence. Um, well... If you must change the topic, then the good detective here must testify again. But too bad, not enough time, let's move on. Ah yes, Ms. Von Karma is perfectly correct. Ugh, now even the judge is on her side. If I bite off more than I can chew here, what should I do? Why is Ms. Von Karma suddenly putting up resistance? There must be a reason as to why she suddenly threw out an objection like that. There must be something about this costume. Um, you can probably see it. There's like a big hole in the costume on the right side there, which is very suspicious. Apparently, we couldn't just present the costume to prove that. We have to press and stuff. Whatever. I just have to look harder. Mr. Wright, Ms. Von Karma's logic is perfect. There is no way for you to poke a hole in it. Ugh, looks like my time is up. So about the costume. Your Honor. Actually, there is something very wrong with this piece of evidence. What? What are you talking about, pal? Where is this problem you're talking about? Come this far. There's no turning back now. The problem I have with this piece of evidence is here. Uh, it's here. I asked the court to please take a look at the sleeve of this costume. The sleeve? There is a tiny hole here. Uh, a hole? But that wasn't in the report. Hold on. What's this around the hole? It smells faintly of gunpowder. Gunpowder? No one ever told me. A hole that smells of gunpowder. It looks like I found the hole I was looking for. Your Honor, the only logical conclusion you can make is that it must be a bullet hole. Order, order, order. This is a very grave matter. It's best we correct the court record first before anything else. Right, it's costume updated in the court record. So now we're actually allowed to look at the costume and see the bullet hole because we couldn't do that before as I discovered. Sorry about that, I guess we messed up, sir. Is she actually smiling? What else is she hiding? Pull yourself together, detective. That tiny hole doesn't change a thing. The strength of the evidence still holds. Continue with your testimony. That, just now, was a fluke. Nothing more. Objection! How can you say something like that? This is a huge oversight. Well, I agree it is a mistake on the part of the police. What Prosecutor Von Karma said is true. The evidence still stands. If you do not find a more definitive problem with the evidence, then... No way! Detective Gumshoe, please continue with your testimony. Y yes, sir. Okay, so now, if we present this piece of evidence exactly like I did before, it will now work. Objection! As you can see. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes <laughs> Having you come with my full name is kind of a weird feeling. You said that my client killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Yeah, I did. Then what, may I ask, is the bullet hole you police overlooked supposed to mean? Um, what does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that the victim had fired off a shot. Is that what it means to not fight back? Ah, you're right. It seems you were correct. If the victim had tried to shoot the defendant, then it would change everything. All oh, right, the wind seems to be shifting. Huh. What is with that? Are you finished yet, laugh? Are you finished yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ms. Von Karma? It seems that my affair was shot at by the victim. However, that is only grounds enough to support a justified self-defense plea. That is correct. 
but I'm sure you remember, Your Honor, what the defense clearly said. They rejected justified self-defense and pleaded not guilty. Ack! Now that you... Why, that's right. Which means... The defense has yet to prove anything at all. No! It doesn't even make sense. We've proven, like, that their conception of what happened is completely wrong. It doesn't really matter what we're trying to eventually plead to. Because we're going to continue arguing back and forth and stuff. <laughs> well, yes, that's true. It's not true. Furthermore, just the fact that there is a bullet hole in the costume is not enough to substantiate even a plea of justified self-defense. Huh? How so? Don't just stand there. Hurry up and tell the court what transpired that day. With the twin... With the... Viv. 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 Viv's the new information we added, acquired added in, of course. Huh? You mean by myself? You want me to put together the scenario all by myself? Ah! Yes, sir. Right away, sir. What transpired? During the channeling, the defendant saw her chance to stab the victim in the chest. And of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, so... While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. The defendant then picked up on the opening, took the victim's gun, and ended it. Okay, so the problem with this one... Hmm, this scenario put together does make sense. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Wright, on the surface it does seem to make sense. However, I won't give up that easily. You at least refrain from glaring at me like that. Now then, your cross-examination, please. So the problem is, if they were so close, uh, when the victim fired off a shot, why did the costume not suffer any gunpowder burn? Because if you have a good look at the costume, which we can do now, you can see there's no burn around that hole whatsoever. It's pristine, except for the exact spot where the hole is, which means there must have been some distance. Missing the tiny hole on this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. Huh? Well, what do you mean? This little hole's actually created a huge hole in your testimony. Uh, explain yourself, Mr. Wright. You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point blank. If that were true, then where is the gunpowder burn on this costume? Gunpowder burn? This is what you testified earlier. When something is shot from point blank, a burn error is left around the bullet hole. Oh! But there is not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. That is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? It means that when the shot was fired, they were standing apart from each other. Hmm. I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You think you can punch a hole in my logic with that? With Vivishiwachi thinking like that, anyone can explain anything away. Away. I, I can't, I can't do it. I'm trying. Can I implore you to disprove my line of thinking? Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away. And it was then, then they were separated, that he fired. How was that? As if that was even possible. According to testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had the strength to push the defendant very far after that. Well, then... That's right, the defendant must have pushed the victim away. After stabbing him, she must have put some space between the doctor and herself. And then, while she was preparing to strike again, the doctor took his shot. There. That should satisfy even you. Hmm. That does make an awful lot of sense. What do you think, Mr. Wright? I must be careful. I can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. 
There is a fatal flaw in her argument, Your Honor. Fatal? Flaw? Yow! Very interesting. I would love to see where this floor is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There has to be a snag in her explanation somewhere. She put some distance between them before rushing to make the final blow. And when she was about to strike, the doctor took his shot. There must be a piece of evidence that contradicts this line of thinking. Well, firstly, that doesn't make sense because she had a knife. And if you've got a knife, you don't... Hmm. I forget what the contradiction actually is. Like, we have this folding screen, which proves that... I, I think it's the folding screen, actually, because we know there's a bullet hole in the screen, and we know that the gun only fired twice, so that bullet hole must be from the same bullet that also made the hole in the costume, which suggests that she wasn't, you know, preparing to strike, but actually down off the ground, on the ground. This is the piece of evidence that destroys your logic. Yes, yeah, the right one. What is that? A folding screen? I would like to point out the court's attention to the hole in this folding screen. Yeah! It looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Are these two really that clueless? The bullet went through the defendant's sleeve first, then the folding screen. It passed through at a height of approximately 8 inches off the ground, which means... When the shot was fired, Maya, I mean the defendant, was not getting ready to strike, was actually squatting low to the ground. Order, order. Th this changes everything. Please look at this diagram of the crime scene. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he fired the shot. And the bullet hit this folding screen. He hit at this location, about eight, eight inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. Well, it must have been about here, because that's where the bullet hole is. She was standing here, near the folding screen. Wait a second. Wait a second. We know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole. But how can you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? That's impossible. But, but why? But, but why? You of all people should know the answer to that question, Ms. Von Karma. If she was shot from somewhere closer, there would be gunpowder burns present. However... There is nothing of the sort around the bullet hole of this costume. Ah! Curse you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You! Hmm. I believe it has now been proven that... The defendant was standing away from the victim when she was shot at. But do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed that the defendant was aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with the knife would be ideal. However, where and what was the defendant doing at the time? Squatting all the way by the folding screen? Exactly. If Maya Faye was the real murderer, why would she be by the folding screen instead of repairing to strike? Ugh. Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. Figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job. Ugh. It's really not. It's your job, Phoenix. You do this every time. Alright, with this, the rest of the trial should be in the... B Blast radius of disaster. You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Wright. To think that you've been able to take a completely hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Hmm, you amuse me. Ugh, of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be that smarmy smile? Detective. How dare you damage my perfect logic. H huh? How is it all my fault? You can start repairing your standing by first removing that three-strand goatee. Oh, and rest assured your punishment will come later. P 
punishment? Well then, Your Honor, I think I've had all I can take of this detective's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Witness? The next witness. The next witness? That's gotta be Lotta. Very well. The court will take a five minute recess. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness. I've really gotta work on my Von Karma voice. To be continued. So that's it for this video. Uh, next time we're doing part 2-2 two, two of the trial, which involves Lotta. So I'll have two accents that I'm not great at to use. Because Lotta and Franzi. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, next time we'll be doing that. So thanks for watching and bye!